The home video update is sponsored by you. Yes, you. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash home video update to join as a patron to unlock exclusive membership benefits. Thank you for supporting the home video update. Hi guys, it's Mike and I am back. Um, I will apologise if I do the normal yawner thing like 10 times more because I only finished work like a couple of hours ago as I recorded this. But because it's been two weeks, not intentional again, um, I have kind of fallen off my semi-regular thing. And I said it wouldn't happen with this job and the job is actually really good and is not getting the way too much. But it all depends on like those whenever films finish. If they finish early, you can get out early. Um, like if no one goes into the last showing, you're you're fine. But if someone goes into the showing before that and it finishes 10 minutes before, it makes no difference. But if two people go and see, like last night, Ant-Man, and then it gets out at 11 o'clock and then you've got to like shut up the cinema and then you've got to do this, this and this. And I've got to drive an hour back from where I'm training currently at the moment. It's insane. Um, so a little bit of an update on the job sort of side of things. Um, say so still loving it um i'm currently in a it's it's weird because my general manager has sort of sent me around different cinemas so the first cinema i was in was the one i went to quite regularly um sort of i think the first one we saw in there was the scorpion king so that dates it since then they've had the carpet redone had concessions refitted and the rest of it's identical so that's really weird to see um but it was always kind of like, the problem is because it hasn't been touched in 20 something years, obviously it's kind of fallen apart a little bit. And I 100% get that, you know, they can't really do anything about it. Um, so it's it's a weird sort of place to be in a way. However, the next one I went to was like literally, it was a side of Virgin Cinemas, then it became a UGC, then it became um what it is now and the interesting thing about it is like the amps i think i've touched this before the amps are like virgin ones but they're actually really hardcore because they were built to such a standard in the 90s that they still work and the newer ones are the ones that break because you know they're made cheaply now and it's a completely different thing and they had thx like monitors and stuff this was like a really expensive outfit when it was first made in 1997 this one I'm in currently is around the same time, 97. It was open for Phantom Menace. Um, it hasn't been refitted at all. Like, literally, nothing has changed. It is a brilliant time capsule. Um, like, the seats are still the same. The colour's still the same. The, like, displays for which screen number it is is all the same. But they've had to close off half the cinema because there, are, there was too much competition where it's where it is. And... Heating it, lighting it, all these other things cost too much. It wasn't cost effective because they haven't refitted since 1997. And it's really weird to see all this stuff. I mean, yesterday I got to see... Yesterday? No, day before. Um, you can't... There are lots of rules for obvious reasons. Um, if it's not obvious to you, like danger of death and, you know, all these other things. But um, there is 
a huge danger and a huge stringent things around changing lamps. So xenon lamps um, are dangerous things. And the first time I was in a cinema when the lamps were being changed, I was told you can't come up onto projection. You can't get onto that floor because blah, 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 blah. Um, very few people are trained um, because it is a very specialist skill because of the danger to life. Um, sounds weird, doesn't it? But it, it's like changing a light bulb, but no. Um, so it's really weird to see these things. And in the second cinema I was in, the GM there was trained and he did it when we cleaned their 4DX screen. Um, and that was interesting to see because you could see him do it through the porthole with projection. Um and I couldn't really see much, but it was cool to see. My GM, as long as I'm wearing the Kevlar vest and the like, the whole bomb disposal gear with the face mask and everything, he was cool if I stood back and watched. And he explained to me how it worked, what you do, the audio you do things. And it was fascinating to see the fact that, you know, all this gear in this NEC projector, which dates from around a Series 2, so I think like mid-early 2000s, um, off the top of my head, it's it's amazing to see, you know, how over-engineered it is because you've got the US stuff like the Barcos and things like that. I don't like Barco. They're a bit flaky. This goes super high-end. But it's amazing to see how over-engineered they are and, like, the blast shields and all this other stuff and the venting and things. We run Christie's. Um, they are very new. They are very good. They have really good quality and... I saw Spencer talking about this. Um, I mentioned him too much on this podcast. I'm going to have to get him back on again. Um, I'm trying to arrange another thing as well when I have like time. Um, I have some time off coming up reasonably soon. I'm going to try and get a few like dual header um, podcasts in. Um, but yeah, so um, he was saying about, you know, the quality of projection and things like this. I mean, based on an article and they're very much, that article was very much, it felt like Dolby needed a press release so they reached out to someone and it became Dolby propaganda as these things mostly do um and he mentioned about IMAX sound being boomy I get that 100% um they are what they are I mean the base in there are these big base tubes that behind the walls I mean I get that that is it is by nature overwrought boominess um however said about standards and stuff and I agree that from what I've seen so Every single week, you have to do PPMs, which is basically you measure the light level of the screen with the lumens. Um, you have to check every single speaker like with the home cinema system, like front right, center, front left, rear right. You know, you have to do all this stuff to make sure things work. If it don't work, you report it. If you can fix it yourself, fix it. If not, you call out someone to come and fix it. It's It's something everyone has to do. It's the same with pretty much everything. You think of you go into a restaurant and half the seats are broken and stuff and you know no one's cleaning the tables it's that same thing but because it's more visual and auditory um you notice it more um and i notice it like massively like my stupid golden ears and my golden eyes even though i wear glasses it's like i see this shit and i'm like that's not right so my my gm had these things of like that we need to make money we want the customers happy these are the three like tenants he runs by and audio visual perfection and that meant a lot to me that made me think hey look i've got the right guy i've got the right job because this is me and now i'm in charge of av for the site it's like yeah i get this um and he's right i mean there are some lax things that i've seen in some places um some things you can't change it's inherent to the technology like sometimes the gray blacks depending on the units that they're running um but things like not changing the bulbs out so like i say so many people are so few people are trained, so it becomes a big thing. Um, what I want to do is get to um, what I've been watching, because I hadn't actually watched that much. Um, and that's part of the reason why I didn't just throw in, like... I was going to do one at, like, 2 a.m. the other day, a podcast. I was like, no, I need to try and sleep. Um, and I hadn't actually watched anything. So I'll do a bit of what I've been watching. I'll get back into, like, the audiovisual perfection thing as, like, the sort of main topic. Um, so we'll do what I've been watching and the news. So... What have I been watching? Um, I'm not sure this was in the last one, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Um, Tony Scott's Spy Game, still great, still love it. The Blu-ray I thought was really good at the time because it seemed kind of analog and doopy and filmy. Um, it turns out it just looks like shit. It's 
Universe always used to praise for their current releases, but it used to slag off for their catalogue releases because they're all GNRE and horrible. Not as bad as Paramount were, but pretty bad. Um, this just looks like shit, like it enhanced shit. It needs a remaster. Um, Universe needs to go back to things like this and actually do a proper remaster of it. I still think it's great. It's one of Tony Scott's best films. Um, still holds up. Still a good thriller. Um, well paced, well acted. And it's, again, that sort of start of the Tony Scott hyperkinetic camera thing. Um, in preparation for Ant-Man, um, I watched Ant-Man. So I watched the first Ant-Man again. Just because I like it a lot. I think it's a really good heist movie. Um, I think it benefited the fact that Joe Cornish and Edgar Wright wrote it. And a lot of the previews and a lot of the stuff was planned by Edgar Wright. Um, Payne Reed did a good job. I think it's a fine, fun film. Um, yeah, I still think it's pretty good. Um, I watched the 4K. It's pretty. It's, it's okay. It's got the Atmos soundtrack, which is a good-ish mix. Um, but I think it's a film that deserves to be seen in 3D because the scale and the way it worked was really good for the 3D conversion. It's one of those films that worked as a 3D conversion, I thought. Then I watched Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I saw it in IMAX. Um, I was as down on it as people, other people were. It's it's not a strong start to Phase 5, yeah, um, at all. It's got massive flaws. Um, people saying, like, the Quantum Realms are a bit too... Quantum realm is a bit too brown um you're kind of in places um there's some parts of it are quite blue but okay um it's a bit sludgy is what people said i saw an imax 3d i didn't see that um really i like the character designs on some of the aliens i thought david Ashman was really good as the whole guy um yes there are effects that aren't very good yes they're rushing people yes they've got crunch issues i get it you know, there are some issues there. Marvel need to get the house in order because it's not really working, is it? Um, then I went on a bit of a Deacons thing again. I've been in and out of Deacons for the last couple of weeks. And I watched his first ever digital shot film in time, um, which was, who was it? It was uh, director of Gattaca, Andrew Nichol, um, Roger Deakins, Amanda Seyfried, Justin Timberlake film. I've always liked it. Um People would say that Nickel fell off after Gattaca. He never got anywhere near it. Yeah, kind of. Um, I mean, it's not Gattaca, obviously. But let's see what else he's actually directed. I can't remember. Um, but I like In Time. I think it's a decent premise. It's a well-made thriller. Um, it's got some good moments. It's got some bad moments. What did he do? Oh, Lord of War. People like that. I like Lord of War. It's okay. Host is terrible. Good kill, I haven't seen. Anon, I haven't seen. He really has fallen off a cliff for as far as his quality went. Simone, I never watched that. Uh, Did he write the Truman Show? Or am I thinking of someone else? Let's have a look at him as writer. Yeah, Truman Show, he wrote The Terminal. Oh, okay, I like The Terminal. Um, In Time looks great. It's Roger Deakins. I mean, it's Roger Deakins' first digital thing. He played around with light capture and things like that and it's i think it's a beautiful film then for some reason mostly because it's a podcast that um they're going back and watching films they're currently doing a 90s cheesy sci-fi thing they did it's the next line of watch cast if anyone's wondering um they did virtuosity is the first film which i love ross the rock versus um denzel washington russell mulcahy film um was it Russell Mulcahy? I think it was. Oh, now I'm going to show my fuck up. Um, virtu- virtuosity. I swear it was. Brett Leonard. Oh, of course it was. It's Law Mower Man Man. Law Mower Man Man is now my new thing. Um, and they watched Demolition Man. So I watched Demolition Man. Um, it's a film I grew up on. I used to rent all the time on VHS. So I've always loved it. I still think it holds up. I'd like to see some of the deleted scenes put back in, some of the original cut put back together. Um, it's dated a bit. They mentioned it at the time. It's like the weird racist improv um, that Snipes does with the um, Asian kids is a bit cringe. I mean, he's meant to be a villain, so I get it. But also, would they put it in a film now? Probably not. Demo Fan kicks ass. 
it some of it doesn't hold up and some of it's amazing. Dennis Leary is just playing Dennis Leary. Um, but I love Demolition Man. I mean, he, how can you not like Demolition Man? Then I sat in our cold, broken screen again, which is, also, again, cold and broken, um, and watched Cocaine Bear, Elizabeth Banks' Cocaine Bear. It's a fucking riot. I don't care what anyone says. I mean, the memification of stuff like Snakes on a Plane, where it's just literally meme the movie, I don't think this was it. It tried to tell a story. It tried to do something fun, something different. It was it's the type of film that would have been an 18-rated film back in the day. I don't know if it's R-rated in the US, um, but it's a 15... It's R-rated, shit. Um, it's 15 over here, but the gore is... I think a bit too much for a 15. It's a hard ass 15 considering Megum's a 15 had nothing in it. Um, I really liked it. I thought it was fun. It was silly. Um, there were many times I laughed out loud. The first 10 minutes of that movie made me nearly fall off my chair from laughing because there's one little thing that happens and it's just great. I mean, look, they're stretching the base of the true story. They're going like Fargo did, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not comparing it to Fargo, but you know, it's that kind of stupid thing of, like, based on a true story. Yes, a bear did eat cocaine in real life. It died very quickly, and it didn't go on a murderous rampage. And, you know, there weren't these things. But I thought it was really good. Um, O'Shea Jackson Jr. is really good. He just now looks like his dad. He is just literally Ice Cube. He has morphed into Ice Cube. He has cosplayed his dad in the movie, um, and now he's just Ice Cube. Um, Ray Liotta, R.I.P. I mean, he looks unwell in this, but... He's having fun. He's relishing his time. Um, Alden Ehrenreich, why isn't he in more stuff? He's actually really good in this. I like Alden Ehrenreich. I like Solo. Um, I have no idea why he's not cast in more things, because I think he's genuinely good, like Hail Caesar and this. He's he's definitely fun. Kerry Russell, why isn't she a major movie star? She's barely in anything. Since, like, J.J. J. Abrams sort of made her popular, I mean, what's she been in? The Force Awakens? Not The Force Awakens. Um skywalker um rise of skywalker but he, she's barely been in anything and then all of a sudden it's just like she should have been a bigger star i think she's absolutely fantastic um so that's all i've been watching like i say not a lot really um creed's out um i do want to see Cthreed. um i'm definitely hyped for that um i don't know when i'm gonna see that um i'm off so I've got two days off next week. Yay. Um, however, I don't know if I'm going to see it on one day. One day I've got to take my car in for like some work. Um, so I don't know when I'm going to get to see it, but I definitely want to see um, Creed. I tempted to go to the IMAX because it was literally shot for IMAX. Um, but I might just see it at like my job for, you know, cheaper because it's going to cost me nothing to literally get to um to work so that makes more in sense more sense to me um but yeah i mean i don't know what else is really coming up that's sort of blowing my skirt up i think maybe a bit of john wick i'm not sure about because i didn't like three like at all so i'll probably watch it but i'm not desperate to see it um but I think Creed's my sort of main one. I didn't like Creed 2 that much. I think it had way too many flaws. So I watched it again recently on the 4K, and it's okay. Um, but it's not perfect. But yeah, no, it's it's got it's got some bits here and there. But I, I do like Creed 2 better the more I watch it. But it's not as good as the first one. That first one was a genuinely great film because Ryan Coogler did it. You know, he is a better director. So... Yeah, um, yeah. I just think that there's quite a lot coming out. We're in the quiet-ish period now, which is a good time to release movies because you've got like Dungeons and & Dragons and things like that coming up, which can maybe get lost at another time. So it's good they're getting out ahead of it. Um, 65, I really want to see. So I'm really looking forward to 65. Um, it looks stupid in a good way, like Cocaine Bear. So I'm down for that. Um, yeah, so we will get into the news. So there's quite a bit, not a huge amount I've sort of picked over, but bits here and there. So start with Arrow's May releases. Um, Black Hat, weird choice, um, especially since they haven't got the director's cut. They've got the international version, the US version, which is not the director's cut. Um, 
I don't dislike Black Cat. I've got the Blu-ray. Um, I've got the director's cut recorded off TV. It's not bad. It's just weird that they've picked it for a 4K. I mean, maybe they had to do it to get something else. Or they just really like Black Cat. I don't know. Maybe to get Thief, they had to do Black Cat. I don't know. There's some weird... It's weird. I don't I didn't get it. Um, I'll buy it, because I like Black Cat. But I'll buy it in a fucking sale. Um, so it's got the 5.1 mix, which is amazing. Like, literally amazing. That gunfight in that... Man knows gunfights. He screwed up heat, but he knows gunfights. Um, we have Hand of Death. Um... Gone Harvest Flick from the 70s, 76. Yep. Um, I don't know if I've seen it. A lot of those Gone Harvest stuff, if I'm honest, blend together for me. Um, I used to be way more adventurous as a kid, but... I mean... It's... It's it's one of those films that... I don't know. It's, it's an early John Woo, so it's kind of... It's notable in that, but I don't think it's really John Woo, John Woo, if that makes sense. Um, I don't remember a lot about it, which is kind of a weird thing. I mean, Jackie Chan's in it and like Sammo Hung. It's, but they're not like the leads, you know, it's, I don't know. It's, it's probably something I'd revisit. If it was on like something, I'd watch it. Last Starfighter for America only, which sucks. Why? I don't know who's got the rights over here. It's weird because it's universal. So 4K restoration, um, a brand new 4K restoration. So better probably than the one they did for the Blu-ray that recently came out. Um, Stereo 2.0 and 5.1 and 4.1. The 4.1 is great. Can they keep doing that, please? That's fantastic. Um, Audio commentary of Mike White from Trection Booth. I like Mike White. I listen to Trection Booth every now and again. So that's really good to hear. Um, Lots of commentaries. It's got some good stuff on it. I'd be tempted to probably pick that up. Um... The beta test. I watched a trailer for this. It's a newer film. I don't get it. It just seems like a weird... It should be Arrow Academy, not Arrow. It's... Yeah, I, I don't know who they own money for for, for that one. Um, Fear and Love in Las Vegas. Um, it's missing some stuff for the Criterion. Um, I've got the Criterion DVD. I've got the Arrow Blu-ray, the big box set. I'll buy the cheap version of this. I'm not I'm not going to double dip on their box sets again because they're identical and it's pathetic cost cutting. Um, you want to charge for a premium thing, then do something different because that's bullshit. I'm pissed off with Arrow with this. I mean, their quality has gone downhill anyway, so I don't know. I mean, I'll pick it up because I like the movie. I like getting them. And unlike the Criterion bullshit, where getting them stuff's all 5.1, 5. even though it was originally done in stereo, this has the stereo mix, so it beats Criterion, like, straight down anyway. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd probably pick that up and Black Cat out of the lot. Um, Black Cat and Starfighter would probably be in a sale. Hand of Death, I'd probably want to see again, but I'm not desperate to, if I'm honest. Um, Warner Brothers, in part of their 100th anniversary plus their DC re-release, um, are doing Max Fleischer's Superman Blu-ray. So it does have 17 of the theatrical shorts remastered, which is fantastic. Um, it's something that really, really, really should have happened a long time ago. A 4K would have been lovely. In the 4K box set that I'm going to talk about in a second would have been even better. But, hey, they've done the work and it's going to be out. And hopefully it's got the original soundtracks. They haven't compressed the shit out of them. I hope it sounds good, looks good. No DNR like they did with the Batman animated series. I want it to look good. Fingers crossed. Because they were theatrical. Oh my god, shorts. Fingers crossed it will look good and be left alone. But I don't have a lot of hope. Talking of box sets. Warner Brothers are releasing the Superman 1-4 to collection box set. I still think it's weird that Returns isn't in this. But I'm not going to cry over it as long as they release it eventually. Because I like that movie. Um, so Superman the movie, it doesn't really touch on a lot of stuff, apart from the fact it's got a Dolby digital, uh, sorry, Dolby Atmos audio track, um, which sucks, um, if it doesn't have the original, um, 70 millimeter mix like the last release had. If they fix the colour issues and some other bits and bobs, then fantastic, because the last release wasn't perfect. It needs the original 70 millimeter mix, which was unbelievably good so i'm hoping it's got in there it's not just the original disc i'm i don't know i'm hoping 
Um, Superman 2 and the Richard Donner cut. So two separate discs. Two separate versions. So 4K on both. Dolby Atmos on both. Fuck you. Um, hopefully it's got the original soundtrack. I don't really know. Donner cut's different because it didn't have an original soundtrack. So it never was released. So maybe 5.1. But again, so it's just Dolby Atmos. There's no real details here. I need to see the backs. I don't know if there's a thing somewhere I can find. Let's have a quick look while I'm doing this. To see if someone's got a picture of the back of it yet. Um, they normally turn up quite quickly. Let's have a look. If it's a picture of the rear of the package. Um, bum, 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 bum. Um, where are they? Somewhere, hopefully. Um, we have a picture with the back of it. Um, it's also a shame that, you know, it's still missing the extras. We don't get extra cuts of some of them. And I think Donner Cut's going to be weird. Um, I haven't finished on these. I'm still trying to look for the back of this. I thought it'd be like in the news article press release thing I've got, they'd actually list all the audio tracks, but of course not. It's about the cheap seats and they just want fucking Atmos. Um, bum, 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 bum. Here we go. Superman 2. Superman 3. Okay, so Superman 2 has... Donna Cat only has 5.1. Fine. That's... that's. Oh, no, it just has Atmos. Well, whatever. It's the Donna Cat. It's not a official release cut. However, Superman 3 has 2.0 Master Audio. Fuck yes. Right, good. So... 2.0 is fine. I'm happy with 2.0 for Superman 3. That's fine. It is hopefully an original mix. It might not be the original mix, but that's fine. Um, I really want to see the back of Superman 1, though. Where are you? Um, bum, bum, bum. This is this is riveting listening, I'm sure, for you listeners, where I'm just like scrolling through pages and pages and pages of stuff trying to find. Um, do, do, do. I kind of wish they'd gone back and done Supergirl and Superman Returns and the whole thing. If they go celebrate 100 years of Warner Brothers and then like not gone the whole hog and had everything included. Um, that that would be that's dumb to me. I think if you're gonna do a celebration of Superman, a celebration of Warner Brothers, do them all. Um It's a little bit depressing, to be honest. Um Where is it? I'm sure it's gonna be in a somewhere. Right. So you man the movie, you see it's, it's the same video master as the 2018 UHD, but it includes the original theatrical audio mix. DTS HD MA. Okay, so it's uncompressed. Um, so it's the same version of one. So it looks exactly the same. That's interesting. I thought they would have fixed that, but the audio is good, so that's fine. We'll walk away from this one. Yep, so... Uh, Superman 3, um, again, Dolby Atmos, but we know now it's 2.0. I think 4 will be the same, which I'm absolutely fine with. Deleted scenes are on here. I wish we had... Um, there's a lot of deleted scenes on 4. That's interesting. Um, I really do wish we had the extended cuts of stuff um, of 4 and 3, especially 4, but I don't think we're ever going to get it, and it's depressing. But I've still got an ordered in for it. I will buy it because I love Superman, so I'm down for it. I have Superman tattoo. I mean, come on. Right, so Scream fucking factory. Stop releasing things I like. Um, Brother of the Wolf. Um, they fucked it last time on Blu-ray. Fingers crossed they have unfucked it. Um, the subtitles were completely screwed. Um, it's got a new 4K restoration approved by Christoph Gans. 
This is being released as well by Opt- um, Optimum Studio Canal. Shows my age. Um, so I'll pick up that version. I'll pick up probably the French or the probably going to be an English version. Um, love the film. Happy it's coming out. Um, it doesn't say that it's the director's cut or not. So I don't know about that. It literally doesn't say anywhere in this press release anything about it, which is interesting. Um, the Morning After, Jane Fonda, Jeff Bridges flick. Um, don't know a lot about it. Cinema LeMay film that I don't think I've seen. The Haunting. Why do people now like The Haunting? It came out in 1999. I saw it in the cinema. The only good thing about The Haunting was its sound mix was fucking aggressive. So that Dolby Digital Laser Disc was amazing sounding. I bought the 4K version on Apple because it was 399 or 299 It was cheap and I could hear the sound mix and watch the thing in 4K. I'm not buying a 4K disc, but people seem to have this reverence for it out of nowhere now, and it's not earned because it's shit. Skyline, I never saw Skyline. I know a lot of people liked it. It got a sequel. Um, I, I've never seen it, so I'm sure some people are happy about that. Um, Conquest of Space, I Married a Monster from Outer Space. Um, classic B-movie stuff. It's it's cool, it's getting a release. It's just a screen cheap double feature. High Women, I've never heard of is Jim Caviezel yep never heard of it and Tiger Cage collection Tiger Cage Tiger Cage 2 Tiger Cage 3 um it's good that a lot of these martial arts films are coming out now um I've kind of drifted on from like I say my tastes have changed quite dramatically over the years um oh Baron Munchausen's on sale oh of course in the UK we don't get 4k releases for Criterion for no fucking reason. The Breakfast Club's also on sale, but I'm pretty sure both of those are 4K, aren't they? Um, Munchausen 4K. Okay, so the Blu-ray is 18.99, but the 4K is 36. Wow, that's um, that's that's money. That is. Um, and that just says Blu-ray. I don't know what it is. Um, Breakfast Club. I'm going to have to wait for a Criterion sale that works in the UK or find someone in the US who's willing to send me stuff. Um, whenever I can buy one, get one sale or something like that, like I pay PayPal the money or something because it's so expensive to import stuff here and we only get... So it's 25% off on The Breakfast Club, um, UK-only version, which is just 2K Blu-ray, which I've already got the universal release. But this has the least scenes, obviously, which I really want to see. Club 4K. So I'm pretty sure... Was it a 4K release or only Blu-ray? It might need to be Blu-ray then. Um, it's 4K Restoration. I've digressed massively. I just saw something on sale like I normally do, but I haven't actually gone in and bought like a 90 quid copy of The Frighteners like I did last time. Um, Deep Impact. Um, in 1998, it was versus the Armageddon thing. Armageddon was the bigger draw. Deep Impact, probably the better lasting movie, but the more forgotten movie. Um, I like Mimi Lida. I like Peacemaker. Um, I think she's underrated as a director. I like her work on ER. Um it's a good film. It's good it's coming out. I mean, Paramount keep reaching into this stuff like The Core. Um, this is a better movie than The Core, obviously. Um, out on May the 2nd, new 4K restoration of the film. I think it's been digital for quite a while, this one. It's one of these ones that's been on, um, like, Apple for, like, years and years and years. And, you know, it's finally coming out on disc, which is great. Um doesn't mention about audio like at all so i imagine it'll probably have an atmos remix which is kind of terrible but it's got a fantastic 5.1 mix like a really aggressive 5.1 mix which is always good to hear um then we've got screen factory who are detailing the exis 3 collects edition uh, i like exis 3 i've got the arrow version but i don't think i desperately need another version because i prefer the director's cut legion's a better film and you won't get anything more out of it because the 4k won't have that but it's got 4k restoration of the film the original camera negative um original stereo and 5.1 tracks um 
yeah, I mean, it's it's good. There's no real extras apart from the fact it's in 4K. I mean, I prefer Legion, so I'd rather watch Legion. And since Legion has had an upgrade, there's no point in me getting anywhere near it. Criterion's May releases, um, Targets, um, which is a Roger Corman film, I think. Yeah, Roger Corman, a uh, Cor- Corman, Corman, um, Peter Bogdanovich film. Um, I don't think I've seen it, if I'm honest. Branded to Kill, um, 4K Restoration, Wings of Desire. Um, I like Wings of Desire. I actually like Sea of Angels at the time, to be fair. Um, Wim Renders is, you know, that type of director that the 4K probably looked really good. Um, it's a film that you either like or you don't like. Um, Petit Maman. Um, I know everyone loved this. I never actually watched it. That doesn't mean I don't like it or don't want to see it. I just never got around to seeing it. The highlight for me is Thelma and Louise. Um, a film that desperately needs des- desperately needs a new transfer. The current DCP is the the Blu-ray Master, which isn't bad. It's a bit tealy. I'm interested to see what colour temperature is on this. Oh, I love this film. Um, I like the Scott Brothers, as everyone knows. Um, it is fantastic. I can't wait to buy this. Um, I wrote the first Criterion 4K. I actually jump in day one. Um, which saying how much I love Baron Munchausen, I haven't. That says something. Um, 4K restoration is supervised by Ridley Scott with 5.1 surround GTS, which is good. Um, as it should be, it would have had a 70 millimeter mix. I think had a blow up. Hold on. Hold on. Is this Criterion rewriting shit and saying that like the Gillingham things, Thelma Louise, 70 millimeter. Let's have a look. Bum 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 bum. It must include seventy millimeter in my search terms. Do do do. Uh, there's nothing there. So let's go Thelma Louise, and that's fine. IMDb, and let's see. Go down to technical. Technical spec. Nope. Nope. So, it's a remix. Oh, fuck you. Okay, fine, whatever. I mean, I'm still going to buy it. I'm still looking forward to it. Um, since it's MGM, maybe Arrow could do a release and have the actual 2.0 track. That'd be lovely. Um, there's new interviews, but not much else new. Um, I'm still hyped for it. I love that movie, and I will pick it up day one. And Fun City Editions, which is like the best name ever, um unfortunately we're releasing a region a locked because obviously rights which sucks um version of jim mcbride's breathless um i kind of like the original better i know that a lot of people um edgar wright mark commode um a thousand other people prefer this tarantino prefers this um oh, tarantino's a twat bag though um so i mean i like breathless it's fine but i it's an okay remake um i don't think it's good as the original um, it's got a two-game restoration film, The Interpositive, um, new making of Breathless interview with Jim McBride, new audio commentary by critic Gene Kenny, Glenn Kenny. I mean, that's fine, but that probably means because it's really a lot that someone else has got it, which is good. Because maybe... Yeah, maybe it will have a release somewhere else um, by someone else. Hopefully, anyway, because... I can't pick that up because it's region A locked. I now have a region A player. Occasionally top menu trick works on the Panasonic, so that might work, but I like Breathless. So yeah, that's the news. Um, so get back into the audio-visual perfection thing that I sort of alluded to before. Um, I kind of went on a tangent at the beginning because just catching up on life, but it struck me the things I saw Spencer talk about it again this morning on Twitter. And it is a big focus for me because obviously you don't want to pay that money to sit there and have a worse experience. I mean, I've said this many times to people. It's like, especially the one at cinema I'm in now, it's like my home setup with Dolby Atmos DTSX, the speakers I've got, um, the quality of the like receiver I've got, um, my 4K Panasonic OLED, my quality's better. Um, but the cinema experience is the cinema experience. And I think you can really change that. 
Um, but you can have a bad cinema experience. And I think that the quality is a thing. And I think that that's why I got shoved. I was told, like, you know, you're not doing AV. And then it was like, oh, shit, you need to do AV because you give a shit about this stuff. And I do. Um, in the, it has to be the audiovisual perfection thing. And you, and my GM runs both the 1997 place that I'm in and the one that's five years old that I'm going to, where it's like, you know, you can't attain audiovisual perfection in a place from 1997. You can do your best. You make sure your xenons are in, and like are fine. You know, for time, you can make sure that you know all the speakers work. Um, you make sure your sound racks turn on. The Z screen is in the front to dim the image. You know, you could do all this stuff to make sure that you do the best you can with the tools you have. Um, the Christie projectors that we run on every screen are well they're not state-of-the-art but they're brand new they're state-of-the-art for like xenon projectors um they have 4k upgrade paths which they haven't taken obviously they're just standard 2k projectors which isn't a bad thing um because they'd look okay on the screens we've got all the screens we've got are um fixed um ratio um most new installs will now be like a flat ratio or 1.9 to 1 ratio our screen one is like digital limax size so it's actually really big um for the size of the site screen three is the second biggest screen two the gold screen is probably decent size um but i think it's it's stadium seating it's got decent um light um control in the room so you don't get much light bleed onto the screen and stuff like that so you can actually do a lot um most of them, because it's mostly sort of self-run, um, for example, when you change the Xenons in the older NECs, you have to literally align it using special screwdrivers, whereas the Christie's, they're much easier because you put the lamp in, It's you tell them it's got a new lamp, you tell them what type of lamp it is, and it runs an auto sort of setup alignment thing, which is great. So it does a lot of the work itself, and... It's not like projection of old where you had to be skilled. You had to know what you're doing. You had to strike the carbons. You had to literally like flick over to um, like the next reel and the next projector when it's up and queue up the next reel and look for the cigarette burns and all this stuff. But it is kind of like that in if you care about it, if you know what I mean, because you have to care about it. Um, there's one thing that I really think um, I keep telling people about this, um, which is a line in Empire of Light, um, uh, which I want to get like put onto projection on the wall, um, which Toby Jones as the projector says, um, the projector, the projectionist rather, sorry. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So, yeah, so there's a couple of them. So it's like, well, that's just should be. You don't want people to know. They should just seem a beam of light. But back here, it's belts, straps, pulleys, intermittent sprockets, complex machinery. That's the carbon. Spark between the carbons makes the light. And nothing happens without the light. It's amazing because it's just static frames with darkness in between. There's a little flaw in your optic nerves. So that if I run the film at 24 frames per second, you don't see the darkness. It's called the fee phenomenon. Viewing static images rapidly in succession creates an illusion of motion, an illusion of life. And that's what I love. You know, it's like, it's that illusion of life. It's that little thing of like, I still see the magic. I still feel the magic when I'm messing around projectors. When you look through the porthole and look out into like the sea that's projecting and what it's projecting. I love that. I'm like, oh, there's a little bit of the whale. Oh, there's a little bit of like... Ant-Man and the Wasp or whatever, you know, it's it still gets me that little thrill. And I think that as long as you've got someone who knows what they're doing or cares what they're doing, I think it makes a real big difference. Um, because if you don't, it's really depressing because a lot of the older stuff you have to bodge um to make it work and that's not anyone's fault i mean lack of investment is a thing but they'd rather open new sites or you know invest in this invest in that and rather than do the other stuff because spending money because most people don't actually notice this um like one screen in the 
the ninety the cinema I was in with like the mix of old and new with the Virgin amps. There's two people that have ever complained about one of the screens, um, and they don't get right what's wrong with it either. But they know something's wrong, and it could just be a perception of just like the mum taking the kids to watch Puss in Boots. They might think, oh well, yeah, no, I didn't see anything wrong, but it's just an old cinema. And that's what you think of it. It's like, it's an old cinema rather than, yeah, that speaker's done this, that's bypassed, this is a problem with this. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's subconscious. You don't actually see what's going on. And that thing for audiovisual perfection, I'm quite lucky with because all that stuff works and it's reasonably new. Um, I'm going to try and fiddle with some of them just to see if I can mess around with stuff. But the problem is they're very much idiot boxes. And because it's a light controlled room, with silver slash white screens, depending on the screen, and um, 3D versus non 3D, for example, um, it's there's very little you can do because you don't need to do anything to it because they kind of work, and that's the whole point of it. Um, they don't want you messing around with contrast or anything like that because you shouldn't have to. It should just work, um, and they're not wrong. It should just work. However, it doesn't always work which is more of the issue than anything else is that you've got to find someone that actually gives a shit to make it work because i don't think a lot of people do um either through not knowing not being educated or not caring um it's not their fault i mean most people will just sit in the cinema and go i love you time do you know what I mean? They won't get that there is um, something they've missed out on or something that's going on or, hey, look, that's new and that's really good. They don't they don't realize these are things. And I see why a lot of people are scared away from cinema, especially as home stuff got a lot better. Um, but I still think I want to see the cinema experience it matters to me it really does i mean i'd rather be whisked away even in kind of a naff sort of cinema that's like 30 years old and has been untouched since that day i still think it's more interesting to me for that whole i don't know the the whole magic and majesty of films the whole thing is like the Empire of Light quote, it's that majesty and that magic that I think is kind of missing. Um, and that got away from it in multiplexes. That's why, you know, a lot of people go to like a bespoke place like an Alamo Draft House or an Old Prince Charles um, cinema, you know, things like this, because they have that magic and that majesty and that reverence for film that maybe some of the other ones don't. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a sticky thorny issue but i think that um you can make a difference and you can still get good quality and good stuff and people do care i mean i think the illusion that cinemas don't care anymore i mean the checks we have to go through for some of this stuff is insane and there are some people in some places that don't care obviously i mean that happens um but you can make a difference if you've got the person that wants to make a difference. Other person teaches like a job and the people that I still get excited walking to screens. I still get excited looking around and seeing something projected. I'm just still a big kid with it. So hopefully that lasts. It doesn't get beaten out of me through like hours and work and all these other bits. But, you know, I still love it. I really do. So um, I want to thank everyone, um, especially my... Um, and patreons for sticking with me um i'm trying to keep up to date with this stuff and trying to get these things going but obviously it's um it's not the easiest thing in the world um but there are times where i try and times where you know i miss and i am trying for you guys i'm trying to keep going so thank you all for listening and i hope to see you soon i'm not going to commit to a time but i will see you soon all right Thank you.